Hello, hello, everybody. We are going to continue our Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright Trilogy playthrough with the final case from the original game, which is technically... Well, technically, that's a lie, because the original, original game was on the Game Boy Advance, if I recall. Then it was ported over to the DS, of which they then added a fifth case to try and be like, Hey, you can buy the same game again. We added more content. It's specialized for the DS. And uh, so, b technically from the original game, but from a port of the original game. Man. Either way, it's going to be another long one, so let's jump... Well, I guess before we jump... I don't know. Brain is going all over the place. Overall, I've had a weird day. I actually woke up at a good time this morning. After a particularly bad night for dark thoughts. So, yeah. Felt real weird to just have a terrible night. Brain trying to eat myself. And then I woke up. And I actually was rested. And it was at a super early time. Like, three hours early, and I felt rested. I don't understand my brain. But either way, we have a long thing to go. It'll probably at least take two to three streams. Onwards we go. With episode five, Rise from the Ashes. I do not... I don't think I know anything about this owl. That hurts my eyes. Movement! <laughs> that's not really something that's been in this game. When it comes to the quote-unquote cutscenes. Oh, yeah! Because <laughs> they were like, we're gonna have a 3D model. Alright, so... Two murders happen at the same time. Is that what we're getting out here? I assume. Oh, great! It's the mascot of Doom. This will be interesting. So there were like two murders. Seemingly, that's what the presentation seemed to have to say about it. A vase was broken and the weird police mascot witnessed something. Well, well. It's been two months since Maya left the office. Two months without a single trial. I've had offers, but none I took. Ah, why? That is until the day that girl showed up. Why didn't you take any of the cases? That seems a bit odd. For the entire trilogy, you were like, well, entire trilogy, the entire game, you were like, ah, we need money, my poor wallet, and then you get offers, and then you didn't take a single case? Huh. February 22nd, 10.02, Write and Co. Even though there's no co, there's just write. Why do I come here to the office every day? It's not like I want to work. There you are, finally! Where have you been? My sister's trial's tomorrow! Why does it feel like they kind of reused uh, Maya's kind of stock pose for this? Alright, who are you? Um, who are you? It doesn't matter who I am, it only matters who you are! The famous defense attorney, Mia Fey! Uh, you are quite a few months off, lady. Mia Fey has been dead for quite a while. Oh, uh, you're not Mia Fey, are you? I'm sorry, but Miss Mia Fey no longer works here. So you are? I mean, come on, shouldn't you know by the name of the office? It's Wright & Co, not Fey & Co anymore. <laughs> so you are the coffee boy? I'm Phoenix Wright, a defense attorney. Right, right. Wait, you're the Phoenix Wright? The Phoenix Wright from the Edgeworth murder case? Um, yes, that's correct. It wasn't Edgeworth who was murdered, though. <laughs> that is a funny point, that it's, it's only known that Edgeworth was on trial. <laughs> that he was involved in some way with a murder. It's hilarious that it's not like... Then again, the Yanni Yogi... Well, no. What was his name? I forget, Matt Howard? I forget his, I forget the murdered guy's name. He wasn't actually all that important to the case, all things considered. That's a relief then, you're better than nobody. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I'm not taking cases right now. Still don't know why. But you are Phoenix Wright, right? The undefeated defense attorney? 
Oh, that, that, that is a, a reputation. <laughs> Look, I'm not accepting any new cases. I'm sorry, but you'll have to try elsewhere. Please, I'm out of time, but please, you have to help. It's my sister. <laughs> ah, so even the game acknowledges the parallels here. Maya? Could it be? Hello, hello! Welcome. We have just started the fifth case. And the game is admitting the similarities between Maya and this character. Or at least, the similarities that I think I picked upon initially in the first stock pose. Okay, I'll hear you out. Really? Thank you so much! My name's Emma, Emma Sky. I'm a scientific investigator. Scientific investigator? Well, tell me about yourself. Emma, was it? So you're a scientific investigator. Yes, that's right. Is something wrong? No, it's just you seem kind of, uh, jumpy. Or maybe just young? Young? I'll be 16 years old this year, so you're even younger than Maya. Hilarious. Oh, I see. Wait, only 16? I'm set to be formally assigned to forensics in three more years. That's still three more years, but I guess overall that's actually quite quick. My work is becoming quite well known, at my age no less. Um, so what exactly is your current position then? Well, legally speaking, I guess you'd call me an 11th grader. But I'm ready to do my job, at my age no less. That's gonna be her, uh, her catchphrase, isn't it? At my age no less. Great, another future professional in training. Tell me about the case. Did Natural take a few days off because he wasn't sure if he wanted to do his job anymore? Why is he the prosecutor in this case? Well, this is two months later after Maya left. But I don't know if he's the prosecutor in this case, but I guess it would make somewhat sense, maybe? Because since this was a bonus case for the original... Well, technically, yeah, the original game ported to the DS, they might not have wanted to, like, remake an... Because they didn't probably... They've already made a bunch of assets for this case. So why didn't they make a custom, like, prosecutor for this one? I guess it was, we need a high-level prosecutor, but we don't want to use the tutorial prosecutor, and we don't want to make a new prosecutor, so use Edgeworth. That's probably the logic. So what's this case about a case? You said the trial's tomorrow? My sister didn't do it! She wouldn't stab someone with a knife! She wouldn't! So it's a murder case. All, have all, all of my cases have been murder cases. When will I get just a petty theft? I don't care if there's a witness who sa saw her do it. She didn't do it. I know she didn't do it. It's a scientific fact. And there's a witness. J just talk to her. You have to talk to her. Right, I suppose I will. I promised her I'd bring Mia Faye, but... That's interesting. How would she know Mia? And how would she not know that Mia has been dead for like six months now? This case is argued as one of the worst cases in the series. Oof. Well, let's get a roll in and experience it then. But yeah, why wouldn't the person who would know to go to Mia in case they needed something not know that Mia died? Especially, again, because why? Why isn't frickin' Red Man, not Red Man, White Man, Red, White, and Blue like, acknowledge, because he was supposed to be this big guy of this big corporation who held the balls of politicians, prosecutors, and judges in the palm of his hand. We got him freaking arrested with the murder of Mia Fey, and nobody seems to acknowledge that. I don't get it. Scientific investigator. So you want to be a scientific investigator when you grow up, then? Uh, excuse me? I'm not a child, I'll have you know. Still, it's good to have a goal, albeit a very unusual one. I believe investigation should be done scientifically. Don't you? Uh, yeah. Sure, can't falter for, falter for a lack of enthusiasm. If this case is handled scientifically, I'm sure my sister's name will be cleared. Uh, we mostly deal with the paranormal, actually. Do you know how many times our cases have been aided and solved through ghosts? Your sister. I've been doing research, you know. I'm developing a new scientific method of case investigation. I'll show you when I'm done. That'll be interesting. I guess we made Red White go from CEO of Blue Corp to CEO of Black and Blue Corp. Eh, I feel like he did that to Phoenix since he punched us. I'm looking forward to it. Feels like I should get down to the detention center and talk to her sister. But relation to Mia, we must get all information. 
My sister asked for Mia specifically. Again, how would she not know that Mia's dead? This Mia Faye person was a few years below her in school. So they went to the same school, huh? She always told me to go to Mia if I ever needed a defense attorney. And well, I need one. I just realized that this, uh... The parallels between me, uh, Maya and Emma are more similar because Maya also was told, Hey, go to this, like, super, like, defense attorney guy that I worked under if you need help. And then, and then, uh, well, he was unavailable. And now this lady is like, Hey, my sister told me to go to Mia Faye if I need help. And, uh, well, Mia Faye cannot help. Um, incidentally, Mia is a woman. Now that you mention it, I guess it is more of a woman's name than a man's. Well, it's nice of you to help your sister out like this. You must be close. Well, actually, when she gets like she is now, I kind of hate her. Huh? But she's my only family. Your only family? What about your parents? They died in a car accident when I was little. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> so what is this? If Lilo and Stitch happened, but Nanny went on to become, like, I don't know, a business person? What is your sister's occupation? That's what I want to know. To the detention center we go. February 22nd, detention center. Hmm, I wonder what's wrong with Emma. She got quiet all of a sudden as soon as we arrived. God, I thought I told you I didn't want visitors. This is sorry, ma'am. This is just your sister. No excuses. Or did you not want to raise this year? Hmm? Uh, understood, ma'am. What is that all about? What are you, military super prosecutor? Hi, Lana. Funny. I seem to remember specifically telling you not to come here. Perhaps my memory is failing. Look, I didn't want to come here either, okay? But your trial's tomorrow and you still don't have a defense attorney. I'll be the one in court tomorrow. This has nothing to do with you, Emma. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Hey, how do you know me? Mia mentioned you. I've heard quite a bit. Uh, I'm sorry. What exactly is it that you do? My name is Lana. Lana Sky. I'm chief prosecutor for this district. Yeah. <laughs> so you're... <laughs> If you're the chief prosecutor, doesn't that mean that Red White blackmailed you to have things go his way a bit as he then went into court? So wouldn't you know that Mia... Well, I guess I guess if Emma and Lana don't get along too well, maybe Lana telling Emma about Mia was a past thing. Hey, you gave Lana an elegant accent. Now you have to stick with it. Indeed. You're a prosecutor? I think I've defended more prosecutors than people. Two sisters, one a lawyer. Could this be a coincidence? Emma, Lana... I mean, they're just like... Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Well, let us talk. The case! There's something you should know from the start. Which is... The suspect in this case has confessed to the crime. Huh? Wait, but the suspect, the suspect is... Me. I did it. Well, Mr. Wright? Well, why don't you begin by telling me exactly what happened? So are you saying that Larry Butts is less than people? Listen, Larry is a special man. The crime took place yesterday, February 21st, at 5.15 p.m. That's quite specific. It was in the witness's deposition. A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. Uh, my, that was a bit of bad luck, wasn't it? The crime took place in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. The prosecutor's office, huh? In your subordinate's car... A uh, subordinate's car's trunk? Classy. If there was a witness, how did you get so far as to put the body in the trunk? Hmm. I was arrested on the spot, caught red-handed as it were. Well, that's just great. The victim. So, who was the victim? An investigator with the police department. Don't kill Gumshoe! I suppose the correct term is detective. A detective? Death was due to a loss of blood. He was stabbed once in the stomach. 
<laughs> when dealing with a haughty pr prosecutor who is making the defense of herself very difficult, remember to stay hydrated. By you? Death wasn't immediate, but the wound was fatal. I see. Allow me to repeat myself, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective. You know what that means, don't you? Uh-oh! What, Mr. Wright? What does it mean? Well, it means the police department will consider it a matter of pride to have me found guilty. They will use any means at their disposal to do so. This case gets worse and worse with everything I learn. Hey, right, maybe instead of waiting two months to take a case and turning down cases, you should have maybe one have took those, some of those cases. And not just wait for all of the hard ones to come your way. Remember when a haughty person... No, not haughty as in H-O-T-T-I-E. Haughty as H-A-U-G-H-T or so. Like hot cuisine. So you're the chief prosecutor. That is correct. I'm responsible for overseeing every trial handled by prosecutors in this district. I make sure the prosecutors have what they need to do the job and manage every aspect. Those are my responsibilities in a nutshell. That's an awfully large nutshell. Still, I'm a little surprised. I wouldn't think you'd re I would think you'd recognize the district chief prosecutor, Mr. Wright. Huh? In fact, it seems impossible you wouldn't. Um, Lana? What happened to your hand? Yeah, what, what happened to your hand? Oh, this. I cut myself by accident. When I stabbed him, that is. Huh? I'm not very good at being a criminal, I suppose. How am I supposed to defend this? Time to change the subject. Wait, she was in the class ahead of Mia, wasn't she? Um, you were in school of Mia, correct? A few years above her? Emma told you that, didn't she? W well, why not? I did drag him all the way here from his office. Although it seems he has very little in common with Mia. Hey! He was in law school. I was in my third year and she was auditing the class. She was different than the other students. Different? This is probably not an actual prison, but wouldn't they make them wear uniforms? Well, so far I haven't seen anybody in an actual prison uniform. Everybody is just in the clothes they were arrested in. <laughs> she was strong. She'd do anything to become a defense attorney. Anything. That was probably why she was attracted to me. Excuse me? Intellectually attracted. Lana was top of her class in school. I was the best there was. Oh. I'm doing pretty good in school too, by the way. It sounds a bit different when Emma says it. Well, Mr. Wright? I excuse me? As you can plainly see, I'm admitting my guilt. I think it's safe to say there's no way you can take this case. None. You do understand that my last case also had my frickin' guy admit to killing somebody, and then I went on to solve a 15-year-old case. I am not your average defense attorney. <laughs> Mia's lesbian confirmed. Ah, who knows in this world? It's a wacky world. But, but, Lana! Why? Why are you doing this to me? You never think of anyone but yourself. I know you didn't do it, Lana. I know! So, so how can you say you did? If I lose you, I'll be all alone. I, I hate you, Lana. Mr. Wright? Yes? I believe our discussion here has ended. The rest, I leave to you. Um, you mean you're requesting my services as your defense? Don't lose any sleep over it. Your client has confessed, after all. The case is over. Right, I'll do what I can to get to the bottom of this. Lana has confessed to the crime, yes, but something doesn't fit. It's that look in Emma's eyes. There's something else going on here, and I'm gonna find out what. Trust me, Maya, M Maya and Emma are just the tip of the iceberg of how many underage girls Phoenix works with. Yeah, I think I saw one where he works with a literal child spirit medium. I don't know her name, I don't know her role, I just remember seeing very tiny child in spirit medium robes. It's just like... He doesn't get any normal... Well, it could be worse. A, a child spirit medium is probably better than Larry. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Huh? About what? My sister. She's not always like that, you know. 
I just never expected to be defending another prosecutor again. She's changed a lot. She used to be so gentle, always smiling. Everybody liked her. I see. Sorry, but I'm having trouble imagining that. What happened to her? I don't know for certain myself. I think maybe she... well, maybe not. Sounds like there's something there that defies a simple scientific explanation. Let's go check out this underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office, shall we? Okay! Well, first things first, we shall... Save. And let us go to the underground parking lot. This is an underground parking lot. It looks more like a... I don't know, an, a 90s space station. So this is the lot where it all happened. Looks like they're still investigating. Funny that my first visit to the prosecutor's office should be like this. Hey everyone, keep up the good work! Hey, what are you thinking? Well, they're going to be my co-workers in three years from now, after all. So Harmon's saying hello. Actually, there is. You know attorneys aren't supposed to examine crime scenes? I'm trying not to stand out too much here, see? Hey there! You're expecting to go unnoticed here, partner? B partner Oh, this, you are not Gumshoe. What do we have here? Looks like a bambina got loose from the ranches and up to no good. Folks gotta learn to keep them doggies tied down, partner. Mr. Marshall! Marshall? Looks more like a sheriff to me. He's definitely weird. Why are you shaving in the middle of the day? Look here, bambina. I know how you feel. But this is my gang's gold strike, see? Strike? This is our claim for our territory, with a mother load of evidence. If you're fixing to mess with what's ours, you'll regret it, partner. You know what dreams the cacti out in the desert dream? You want to? Heck, Phoenix adopts a little girl that is a magician, so is literally bringing his children to be a sidekick. More importantly, why is he shaving with a survival knife? Well, I guess if you're surviving, that's what a survival knife is for. What's this guy talking about? You had a long home now, happy trails, Bambina. Was that a hombre, a friend of yours? Uh, kind of, sort of, yeah, he's a detective. Who thinks he's a sheriff from the Wild West, it seems. Well, to be fair, Japan and the Wild West of Texas do, for some reason, have odd connections. Apparently there's a flower that only blooms in both Texas and Japan. And then spaghetti westerns basically ripping off samurai movies. It's a whole thing. Well, let's examine shit. First, what's this? A wallet? Um, excuse me, officer! Wait! What are you doing, Mr. Wright? What am I doing? I just found this wallet, so I'm handing it over to the police. I don't believe it. This is real basic. Anything at a crime scene is evidence. Let's be scientific about this, please. Just put it in your pocket. Who knows what Marshall was drinking out of the flask. He might be getting drunk. He might be. How is that scientific? Sounds like theft to me. <laughs> wallet hastily stuffed into pocket. A foldable... Oh, uh, yeah, foldable wallet found at the crime scene. There seems to be something inside. I'm called to duty already and at my tender age. Here, I'll teach you the trick to examining evidence in detail, okay? By the way, her eyes sparkling. I can tell she's been waiting for this. Okay, okay, now, look at the court record. You have to be sure to examine evidence carefully and on all sides. I do understand that they wanted to, like, add something special to the case to be like, hey, it's on DS now, we can do things, but I do think it's a little weird to be introducing new mechanics in the last case. Now, let's start examining from every angle. Although it is kind of interesting. Look, I think there might be a clue there. You should check it out with a press of space. You mean opening the wallet? Looks like something's inside. Inside, you find three condoms. Who knows? This, this is an ID card. Sergeant Bruce Goodman. I'm going to assume that he's a good man. Yeah, with an ID number? See, well, isn't scientific investigation useful? I guess, though I don't see what science has to do with it. Goodman's ID added to court record. Maybe we can just go into places now. Let's be sure to examine every piece of evidence we find. I 
guess I've got to be on my toes from now on. An oil drum. Looks like it's filled with water. I it's heavy! I can't even budge it! The drum over here is on its side. Wait! I know! I'll hide in here and do a stakeout! I think you'll probably just get arrested. In fact, you may not even have to hide in the drum to get arrested. What? I'm not suspicious! Don't have to be suspicious to be arrested of crime. While you're doing new mechanics that are introduced in the last case as a marketing gimmick, remember to stay hydrated. Aha! A ladder! Um, that's a step ladder. What's the difference? In scientific terms, please. S scientific, huh? Look at the basic nature of things, Mr. Wright. This all seems so horribly familiar somehow. Indeed it is. Ah, uh, we can't look at, you know, important things. You'd think we'd be able to look at that. Let's look at the phone. Here, a phone. Let's see if it works. Hey, don't touch stuff we don't need to be touching. I can't hear anything. My ears. No, my ears. Maybe it's due to the bi barometric pressure? What is she babbling about? Hey, what did you just say? See, you can hear just fine. The phone's broken. I wonder if that's important. Maybe the witness called from this phone. This wall is in our way. It's got a faucet for water. Wait, I know. This wall is merely a facade hiding the truth. There's no wall but a water tank. I fail to see how it makes any difference either way. Well, you see, right? A water tank holds water primarily. A wall does not. Well, I guess the... Seems to be the only other thing is the door. Look, a door! This must mean something! I'm not sure that doors mean anything. Emma, hey, I'm not suspicious, Phoenix. Emma, you literally forced me to steal a wallet. <laughs> That's a good point. No, don't won't open. A mysterious lock! I fail to see what's mysterious about it. Mr. Wright, you need to learn to enjoy life more. Let's finish our investigation first, shall we? This is where the cars leave the lot. The arrow on the ground makes it look more, look more like an entrance. What are you talking about? It's plainly an exit. Well, maybe it's both. Kind of a dual purpose? Aha! The theory of relativity. What? Uh, I've got to write this down. Uh, hey, hey, Mr. Wright! Maybe you know, was Mr. Relativity German or was he British? Mr. Relativity? Are you sure that was his name? I don't see anything else here. Investigator's card. Hmm. Well, apparently Edgeworth will be in this case because he is in my diddly D. Well, I guess let us uh, head to the detention center. Since Phoenix doesn't get cases that much, does that mean he gets paid really highly? Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't get paid at all most of the time. I mean, he did Larry pro bono, he represented himself and Maya in the second one. Maybe he was paid decently for the Steel Samurai and that's what's kept him afloat the entire time. And then the next case was uh, Edgeworth, which probably played decently because Edgeworth, like, doesn't want to... Ah, darn, she's not here so we can't give her... Well, I guess we head back. Well, let's present this and, like, do you know this? Here, see this? Ah, I've noticed the defense attorneys have a tendency to want to show people things. What is this, a behavioral study of lawyers? So, no. So I guess I missed something at the parking lot. Did I miss something at the parking lot? Hmm. Because every case he does, we play those cases and doesn't get a lot of cases. Literally, he said that he hasn't taken a case since Maya left, so... And he got offers, so it's not that. I have, look at my badge. See this? It's my attorney badge. Ah, well, I've never seen a real one before. You're the first one who's actually been interested in mine, believe me. Its composition is mostly silver. The gold plating is flaking a bit. She analyzed it, scientifically. There doesn't appear to be any corrosion due to sulfides. I'll, I'll give you $50 for it. Sorry, but it's not for sale. Yet. <laughs> Poor man. <laughs> That's harsh. Hmm. 
Maybe we have to... I don't know. Huh. I don't think I missed anything. Only $50 for an attorney's badge? Well, you know. A buyer's market. <laughs> Again, he said that she's the only person ever to be interested in his badge. Am I blind? I think I might be blind. Oh, slide! I missed the slide button. It's not my fault. This is like the first time that we've used the slide button since Steel Samurai. Tape recorder. Or just camera. Well, no time to waste. Let's get honey for clues. I wonder what this is. Well, partner, looks like you got no intention of going home quietly. Hey, Marshal. The sheriff. Look, I said before, that's, uh, this here's our claim. You'd best be moseying along, unless you're fixing to bite the bullet. God, scary! Could you just tell us one thing? Who owns that car? Well, well, the little filly's got a good nose on her. You want to know who rides that red Mustang with the body in her saddle ass? Please. No problem, partner. About time for vittles anyway. Get yourself to the saloon up on the 12th floor of the prosecutor's office. Pros pro <laughs> prospector's office. Might just find you a cerveza you like. Prospector's office? Where does this guy think he is? And when for that matter? There was a guy that dressed up as Phoenix and he did with <laughs> did that with a cardboard badge and it was somehow enough to fool the judge. <laughs> Note to self, look up Vittle Saloon Cerveza. Maybe we should check out room 1202, the High Prosecutor's Office. In any case, stay away from the car. You can look around here all you like, just keep your paws off our clay. Right, great. Great, maybe there are some clues around here, Mr. Wright. Let's check it out. Excuse me, were you two all set? Us? Who are you? What's this? She couldn't be... You're selling lunches? Here? This is a crime scene. Hello. Half and half, was it? Oh, uh, thanks. And you, sir? Yes? Some crunchy goodness coming at you. Uh, thanks. Interesting way of doing business. This area is off limits to anyone without clearance, especially passers-by. Or are you officers? Uh, no, but you... You don't exactly look like the type to have clearance. Well, that's hardly a way to greet someone. Even if my days as the cough... Cough up queen... Cough, cough up queen... Are over. C cough up, huh? You know, I'm feeling kind of full. Maybe I'll pass on lunch. I'm quite connected to this case, you see. The images are burned into my eyes. Ah, you're the witness! You might say, yes, all the sordid secrets. Secrets? Dear me, you are a slow one, aren't you? I'm referring to the murder, the stabbing of the detective. She's become more intense with that hair flip. What? A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. You mean you're the witness? My sister was talking about? Please, please, cough up queen, tell us what happened. The name is Angel Star. Don't you go forgetting it. Or before you know it, I'll have you whimpering at my heels. Harsh. And the guy's skin was all red, but he can somehow change his skin color. Heck, the only thing that's similar to him and Phoenix is his hair. Yeah, at this point, I, I accept that there are mutants in the world of Phoenix, right? Yes, ma'am. She means it. Well, let's see. The case. Somehow, I knew. Yesterday was a day of destiny. I knew something was going to happen. Just like I know that daily special on Friday every week is Salmon. Destiny? Was yesterday special for some reason? You're a defense attorney, right? You should know then. You should know the foul misdeeds of the evil ones who haunt this den of inequity. Evil ones? 
prosecutors. They have no qualms at all about blackening the name of innocence. And yesterday they paid homage to the most evil one of all. They give an award for king of prosecutors. What a farce. So she's saying there was some sort of prosecutor's convention yesterday. I was almost compelled to lace their lunches with something foul. Do you have a, a personal grievance against prosecutors or something? Or is there some kind of scientific evidence of this, um, evil? Young miss, mock me at your own risk. You'll soon find out why they call the cough up, call me the cough up queen. Ew! The most heinous of all the evil ones, the one they awarded yesterday. It was in his car that they found the body. Proof that he devours the evilest lunches of all. Really? Really what? I'm totally confused. One thing's clear. This lunch lady has a thing against prosecutors. What you witnessed. So what exactly was it that you witnessed, Mrs. Starr? It was a fascinating spectacle, to be sure. I now feel I know what they say when they talk about a woman's wrath. To see Lana Skye wield that knife so. Her knife flashed in anger, bringing him to a sad end. It was truly a sight to see. You mean you saw the very moment of the crime? The sound of his silvery ties to this world being cruelly cut still rings in my ears. And the rhythmic beat of Lana Skye's knife. Wait a second, you know Lana Sky? <laughs> of course. It's quite a feat becoming chief prosecutor. How many lunchboxes of sin did she pack to make that journey, I wonder? She always travels light. Now, why would this pretty lunch lady know the chief prosecutor's name? Especially when us, we, we don't. <laughs> um, could we ask you a bit about yourself, Miss Star? I come here every day to sell lunches. I import only the freshest and best from the Far East. For some reason, the box lunches are a hit here. Why not make lunches here rather than import them? Did you say something? N no Only true connoisseurs can understand. Wow, she has onigiris on her head, in case you couldn't tell that she carried <laughs> his lunch boxes. Now, obviously, those are jelly-filled donuts. Obviously. The kind that you can only tell someone who has tried general s uh, is the tea silent? Tao's trilobite lunch set. Uh, never mind, you win. I don't even want to appreciate part of trilobite's flavor. Anyway, I come here every day to sell lunches. My boyfriend works in the security room here at the prosecutor's office. Y your boyfriend? See the security room over there? The glass walled booth? I sell my lunches, and since I'm here anyway, I drop in to see him. Since you're here anyway, I guess selling lunches is more important than romance. So, to scientifically analyze the data available so far, you, Miss Star, are a lunch vendor with an ulterior motive for coming here. Useful analysis. Not... Prosecutor's office. Did you have a bad experience with a prosecutor, Miss Star? I sense some... hostility. Hostility? Ha! <laughs> Perhaps. Prosecutors are all alike, and the bigger they get, the worse they smell. Kind of like ten-day-old clams in the chowder. I wonder if Miss Star was involved in some sort of legal trouble in the past. That'd be a sure cause of food poisoning, scientifically speaking, of course. I mean, now you're talking cough-up queen. I thought she was just a lunch vendor, but now I'm not so sure. I love that Dual Destinies is rated M, and yet they don't say the F word. Dual Destinies is rated M? How, I wonder. Huh. Well, uh, do you know this face? About this card. Lunchland vendors only accept cash, no cards. Especially not a card belonging to someone else. No, no, this isn't a credit card, it's an ID card. It belongs to a detective. And you're showing this to me, the lunch lady, why? That's like showing a fine honeyed ham to a detective. Why do I always feel like I'm being mocked? Because you are. Well, that seems to be it. Let's go up. Well, first we're gonna save. Because that felt odd. That felt weird. But now let's go to the High Prosecutor's Office. And there is a Steel Samurai back there. And is that a... That kind of looks like Edgeworth's suit. February 22nd, High Prosecutor's Office. Room blah blah blah. This is the kind of room that just screams I can do the job. Quite a change from your office, really. Thanks. Look, look! There's a trophy or something here. 
A trophy? What, that shield? It takes real nerve to display stuff like this. Whoever's office this is, they must be a real stuck-up jerk. Phoenix Wright. You never tire of prying to other people's... Is it, it's gonna be, it's actually gonna be Edgeworth, isn't it? You never tire of prying into other people's business, do you? That voice! Ta-da! Long time no see, Edgeworth. Huh? Ah! M Mr. Edgeworth! You know him from somewhere? Of course! I'm his biggest fan! My sister introduced us once and... Right. Her sister is the chief prosecutor, after all. Well, what brings you here? I'll warn you, I've been known to be a real stuck-up jerk. <laughs> no, did I? No! It was just Mr. Wright here, he... Hey, don't blame me! We're just here to investigate a murder case. Murder. A body was found in this nasty bright... <laughs> it's gonna be his car. <laughs> it's gonna be his car. Did, uh, did you get the chance to view the anime? Not yet, I might in the future. But it seems like the anime goes pretty far into the games, and I don't want to be tainted. Even potentially. <laughs> a body was found in this nasty bright red sports car in the parking lot. Hmm. That would be my car. What of it? They actually drew a new frame for him, or a new face. He's smiling. That would be my car. What of it? Just letting you know, this case isn't in the anime. That's actually kind of funny. What? It, your car? I'll say one thing. She certainly can scream. Phoenix, she is 16 years old. The case. So the body was found in your car? Go ahead, say it right. You think I did it, don't you? After you went through all that trouble to help me last year, no less. No, we don't think you did it. I mean, it was my sister who stabbed him. Uh, wait, no, she didn't do that. I mean... Wait, so you're the chief prosecutor's little sister, then? Yes, sir, I am a sky. It, uh, it's nice to meet you again. Now, that didn't sound forced at all. Oh, now I remember. You've really grown. I'll admit it was a surprise for me, too. To think that my own car would become the scene of a murder. More surprisingly still, I'm being forced to prove my superior's guilt. I can understand, but wait, what did you say? Lana Sky is the chief prosecutor, the top prosecutor in the district. She can't prosecute herself, so I'll be the prosecutor at the trial tomorrow. You? Mr. Edgeworth? Well, before we go on, I want to show him the detective badge, just in case. Court record. Look at- oh, it won't even let me show it to him, probably because it's like- Well, he is the prosecutor, so probably a bad idea, but he's a good guy, still. Oh, wait. It's because I need to present it. Say, Edgeworth, I was wondering about this. Mr. Wright! Huh? What? Are you sure you should be showing that to Mr. Edgeworth? Oh, we'll take it for sure, won't he? Uh, I wish I could be on the same side as Mr. Edgeworth. But then my sister would be found guilty! He's over forging he's over forging evidence. Now he only takes cases to find the truth. Well, that is character development. Ah, <laughs> uh, I wanted to see, because surely he'd want to help me there. Edgeworth himself. To be honest, it's a bit of a miracle I'm still here at all. What do you mean? Rumors. You've heard the rumors about me, haven't you? Miles Edgeworth. It's hard to remember a time when there weren't rumors about this guy. I <laughs> do like the flashbacks to our cases. Forging evidence, arranging false testimony, illegal searches, you name it. Thanks to you, my innocence was established in the trial at the end of last year. However, there are some who say I'm the one responsible for the current incident. W what? That's crazy! Hmm. Some people need very little to a little excuse to think ill of others. It's a fact of life, impossible to stop. But some of them even go so far as to present me with toys like this. They think it's funny. Toys? That bronze shield? There's got to be a story behind that one. But before we do that, I'm going to examine the room. 
My, my, my! What an amazing bouquet! Just right for Mr. Edgeworth. No kidding. Hey, there's a card on it. Back from the dead, Windy. Windy? I've heard that name somewhere before. Have we? I don't remember it. And beside it, a giant steel samurai! Wow, I want one! Huh? There's something written on the bottom of his foot. Between a rock and a hard place, Windy. Windy? Is she Mr. Edgeworth's fiance? Oh! What? But what'd she say back from the dead, though? Old bag? What? Imagine you having to defend Lana and Edgeworth at the same time. <laughs> I'm defending three prosecutors now! Um, I don't think so. But why would it say back from the dead? That's my question. Wow, this jacket is even la lacier than his usual ones. This must be his lucky trial jacket. Lucky jacket, right. I've never seen him wear it. I'm sure there's a story behind why it's in a frame. Maybe I'll... What? Okay. I did not expect that. <laughs> and take a picture. He's getting way too excited about this. I've been wondering, what the heck is this? It has a big K on it. Well, oh, prosecutors. Huh? What's that? It's the King of Prosecutors trophy. K -k -k King of Prosecutors? It's a great honor. They send that shield to the best prosecutor each year. What? So? So that K, that's... K stands for King? Yeah, you got a problem with that. I didn't design the thing. King of Prosecutors. Kind of like Employee of the Month, only better. <laughs> King of Prosecutors added to the court record? Why? <laughs> That's amusing. Oh, these are all case files? They're stacked up to the ceiling. There's even a ladder. Odd. I thought Edgeworth wasn't good with heights. He must have someone get them for him. <laughs> poor, poor, poor Detective Gumshoe. Strange. Why did I just picture Detective Gumshoe? You must study these case reports so closely. He's so cool. You wouldn't say that if you saw him sweating bullets up on that ladder. Ooh, cute! What a pretty tea set! I go more for the instant tea bags myself. Amazing! The drawer below is filled with packets of tea leaves. They're all sorted by place of origin and flavor. Look at this royal blend! What an exquisitely splendid concoction! There's such a thing as taking a hobby too far. Did you know that Edgeworth has PTSD from elevators? Yeah, that would track. I mean, he he curled up at an earthquake, so why not an elevator? Hey, a chessboard! I'm not too up on my chest, but it looks like blue's in a bit of a tight spot. The red knights have surrounded the blue pawn. Huh? Those horses are mounted knights. Their swords have really sharp edges. Then check it out, that poor pawn is on his head is kind of spiky. Kind of reminds me of you. Mr. Edgeworth must be an avid chess player. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Edges. Surrounding a pawn with spiky hair. Nah, it's nothing. <laughs> Does he take it so personally that he's just like, I'm gonna have effigies of myself surround Wright? <laughs> a work desk. It's quite tidy, as one might expect. What a nice desk. Easy to use and easy on the eyes. It's polished so well it can see my own reflection. Maybe it's made out of mahogany from Melchior 7! Strange. Why did I just see a picture of Detective Gumshoe? Maybe I'll take the name plaque as a souvenir. That's theft. Don't. He'll sue you. He would. Heck, the next time we see Edgeworth try to use an elevator, there's a dead body in it. That guy can't get a break with elevator scanning. Poor guy. Whoa! What a view! It must be nice to have an office on the 12th floor. I guess you would feel important. Incidentally, were you to jump out this window, the time until impact with the ground would be... Got it! Approximately 3.23 seconds. That's handy to know. <laughs> handy how, in case we... Oh, dang it. I did not mean to press that. I meant to go down one more. I do like that we get to... If you really miss something, you can go back and view it all. I wonder why Edgeworth isn't proud of the King of Prosecutors trophy. They think it's funny. Chief Prosecutor Sky. Yes, we first worked together on a case two years ago. 
It was my first big case. That's right, I remember. Two years ago, I wasn't even a lawyer yet. Since then, I always felt that she was looking out for me. It appears I was mistaken. Mistaken? I mean, I know she's not the warmest person, but I'm sure she felt some responsibility for you. Then, why? Why did she stab someone in the trunk of my car? Not only that, she stabbed him with my knife. Why do you have a personal knife that match- Why do you have a knife that matches your suit? What? What? Mr. Edgeworth, your knife was the murder weapon? To be specific, it was the knife I keep in the toolbox of the trunk of my car. Edgeworth's knife added to the court record. Speaking of jumping out windows, there was an actual lawyer- I like how that's, like, uppercased. Actual lawyer. Who proved th that the glass window wouldn't break and di uh, and it didn't. The frame gave way and he fell 44 floors to his death. I remember that. This unbreakable glass is amazing. Too bad the, the, everything else wasn't. Um, Edgeworth? What? Are you sure you didn't do it? Come on, can't he take a joke? You have a strange sense of humor, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Well, I guess let's present the trophy. So basically this says you were the best of the best last year, huh? You can take that foolish grin elsewhere, right? I lost a day of work to receive that travesty. Huh? Why's that? I had to go to the police department to receive that broken shield. The police department? Yes, right next to the police station downtown. You've been there, haven't you? Where Detective Gumshoe works, yeah. Um, I was wondering something about your shield. Why is it broken? What is, why does it matter? I've got more important things to worry about. Oh, right. He doesn't seem too concerned about his award for better or for worse. Yesterday was a very busy day for the prosecutor's office. Maybe we should ask him more about yesterday? Wow, we actually can. Let's wave the murder weapon in his face. It's against my policy to discuss evidence with the defense, especially with you. <laughs> he doesn't like you much, does he, Mr. Wright? Nah, with Edgeworth, it's never personal. It's all about winning tomorrow. <laughs> Why does it matter? Uh, because it might be relevant to the case? Maybe, but it, at the same time, it is kind of weird that it's like, ah, it's basically an employee, employee of the year trophy, but... It's in the evidence, so it has to be important. Day of crime. Could you tell me more about yesterday, the day of the murder? Yesterday, there was the annual cleaning day at the prosecutor's office. Cleaning day? Working with the police department, we sort and file all evidence for solved cases. We call it evidence transfer. Wiping your hands of old cases, in other words. Oh, and another thing. A ceremony was held at the police department. There's an annual review and awards for outstanding police officers and prosecutors. And that's when you got... the shield? I was at the police department yesterday afternoon. I got back here at 5.12, which is three minutes before the murder. Man, someone got so tired of cleaning day that they killed someone for it. I do not like cleaning day! I shall make it more messy with bodies! That's very precise. People like myself and Mr. Edgeworth pride ourselves on our precision, Mr. Wright. No, I place little faith in my memory. The only thing I trust is solid evidence. Edgeworth's parking stub added to the court record. So, yep, that seems to be 512. Military time. Man. <laughs> yeah. I wonder why it's military time and not... I guess it makes it simpler than having to change it to PM or AM, and instead it's just go the full 24, who cares? And this is the parking stub from the underground lot. The murder took place at around 5.15. So the murder happened right after you got back. What, right? I'd appreciate it if you'd direct that suspicious glare elsewhere. Um... Who the hell? Excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth, uh, anywhere on the premise? Why is your hand broken? Why are you weird? Who are you? Your badge obviously shows you making that same pose. I'm Edgeworth, what is it? I'm here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I got your report, sir. Report? What? Did you find new evidence in the case against Chief Prosecutor Sky? I don't like the way this conversation is going at all. 
Er, Sky, sir? No, sir. No name of that kind, sir. Not in this report, sir. I think I just heard Edgeworth's lid blow. <laughs> oh, great. It's Ear Rape, the police officer. Well, great. Is he going to blast something in everybody's ears? Mr. Edgeworth's lid isn't on very tight, is it? I made a clear request to the police department, did I not? I need to focus on the trial tomorrow, so don't bring anything unrelated to me. Sir, but, but, sir! I'm just following orders, sir! They told me to bring this to you! I wasn't aware of the particulars of your arrangement with us, sir! Give me your name! Uh, yes, yes, sir! B -b Meekins, sir! Officer Meekins! Right, Officer Meekins, take your report and leave. And good luck with that raise next month. Uh, but, sir, I, I didn't know. Poor guy. Looks like he was absent on the day they gave out brains and <laughs> good luck. Right. Yes, sir? God, he caught me off guard. As you can see, I'm busy. You may leave now. Let's do what he says, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective from the same department as that patrolman just now. Go down to the police department so you can ask more there. Uh, thanks. He seems to have finally calmed down at least. And nice of you to uh, give us some, like, I don't know, stuff. Do you know this? Would you take a look at this? You? Yes? You said you wanted some hot tea, right? Uh, no, but thanks. She didn't even look at me. Hmm, you must have brewed the leave. uh, you must have to brew the leaves a long time to get rich flavor like this. We pre-infuse the leaves with steam before brewing. I knew it, so that's the secret to their aroma. Exquisite. The only thing I'm smelling here is wasted time. What about murder weapon? Nope. I wonder what the longest you failed to present the right evidence thing is. That'd be kind of funny to know. What is the longest you presented evidence to someone who does not care? <laughs> well, I doubt anywhere else matters what first I'm going to save, because why not? And we'll go to the police department. Ah, great, it's the freak. <laughs> the only thing I smear is wasted time and weed, which does uh, contribute to wasted time. Police department entrance. Why is Elvis there? Uh, we're finally here. Why would they put the police department so far away from the prosecutor's office? Beats me. That took almost 30 minutes by taxi. And traffic wasn't even that bad. The police department, uh... I've only ever been in... Been to criminal affairs next door. Hmm? Hold on, what's that? The abomination. Oh, it's animated. Disturbing! Why does it undulate like that? Wait, I know. This is the Blue Badger. They're trying to make him the police mascot. Wow, Mr. Wright, you sure know a lot about the police. Still, he does seem familiar somehow. Forget the Blue Badger. What's next? What's that next to him? Someone appears to be dancing with the Blue Badger? Uh-oh, he noticed me. He sure is running over here fast. <laughs> hey, pal! What are you doing here? That's my line, Detective Gumshoe. Specifically, why were you dancing over there? What? Um, uh, well... Well, at least he doesn't seem to be busy. This is our chance to get information. Hey, I'll have you know I'm a very busy man, pal. Apparently, the police have so much money that they created their own theme park. Uh, that would track what with... Civil forfeiture, which is more like just theft. I'll give you one word of advice, pal. You'd better not agree to defend the suspect in this case. Why not? Huh? Well, it's just that the chief prosecutor's confessed to the crime. She says she summoned the detective to prosecutor's office and she killed him. What if she's not telling the truth? Yes, well, no. Come on, pal, there's plenty of evidence against her. But what if the evidence was faked? Hey, pal, can I speak to you for a second? Huh, me? Why is this little girl so peeved at me? She's a relative of the suspect. She's Lana Sky's sister. Whoa, the chief prosecutor's little sister? Just please investigate this case carefully, okay? Scientifically. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, you might want to keep your voices down. You don't want to be overheard using words like faked. Huh? 
It's just, it's a sensitive issue with us these days. Uh, especially because after everything that's happened, where Edgeworth used to forge evidence and then Karma got slapped. Because I'm... Because I wanna, I'm gonna present evidence to him, maybe. Because you never know if this game, if you talk to exhaust everybody's diddly D, if they'll run away. What do you think of this? Hey, that's it! That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got yesterday. Were you at the award ceremony to take a gumshoe? Of course, pal! I got an award for diligence myself! Ah, congratulations! I was wondering why the award is a shield. And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason. Um, I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently he's forgotten. <laughs> but I was proud of Mr. Edgeworth for winning that award. Even if all the naysayers in the prosecutor's office. Naysayers? Must be because of the rumors. What about this knife? Found in Mr. Edgeworth's car, stabbed with Mr. Edgeworth's knife, huh? What would drive Chief Prosecutor Sky to do such a thing? Wait, I didn't mean... I mean, sure, of course someone else really did it. Someone who must have, um... Someone who must have a grudge against Mr. Edgeworth. The car and the knife do seem a little too well organized to be a coincidence. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. What could have happened? We have to find out a little more about what's going on with Edgeworth. What about this ID? Um, Detective Gumshoe, what can you tell me about this? Huh? Hey, pal, this is a detective's ID card. You can't just keep that. You have to turn it into the police. It's people like you that get me into such trouble all the time. Meaning Detective Gumshoe must drop his card a lot. Mm, let's see. Bruce Goodman. Goodman. Sounds familiar. Nah, my mistake. <laughs> I thought something was going to happen. But didn't you work together with Colonel Pierce? Whoa, now I remember. Bruce Goodman! He's the victim! That's what I thought. Can you tell us more, Detective Gumshoe? <laughs> well, the investigation. So, what are you doing here, Detective Gumshoe? Me? Oh, well, nothing, really. They kicked me out of a criminal affairs. Detective Gumshoe, what did you do this time? What do you mean, this time? Then what happened? I know things are busy right now. I mean, we have my sister's case and all. It's true. We never had a chief prosecutor murder anyone before. Only the highest ranked people are being let into criminal affairs now. The lowest ranking guy in there is our chief of detectives. They're not letting any of us rank and file detectives in at all. None of you? I know this is an important trial, but isn't that a, bit, a little odd? So anyway, I thought I'd spend the day getting to the badge of dance down, Pat. Um, isn't there something else you could be doing? The chief of police himself is directing this investigation, pal. And Officer Marshall was assigned to the underground parking lot. Officer Marshall. Now that I think about it, Emma did seem to know that Marshall guy. A patrolman is in charge of a crime scene. It's a murder, pal! Edgeworth's troubles. He's in a tough spot again. Again? They, the murder was two months ago, Phoenix. Well, it all started with the murder of the defense attorney, Hammond. But Mr. Edgeworth was found innocent! Listen, pal, there have always been rumors about Mr. Edgeworth. Forging evidence, making deals with witnesses. Nothing outright, but there were always whispered rumors. Ever since he was accused of murder, no one's whispering. They practically shouted. But there's no evidence against him. Well, Mr. Edgeworth has always had unusually strong ties to the department higher-ups. It's only natural that people would be suspicious. I had no idea he was under the gun. Anyway, this latest case has started a new rumor. People say the only reason he took the case is because he's aiming for the chief prosecutor position himself. What? But I know the truth, pal! Nobody wants to be the one who is to prosecute the chief prosecutor! Mr. Edgeworth is biting the bullet on this one. He's doing this for all of us. Bruce Goodman. So, this ID card belonged to the victim? It was a detective like myself. Detective Bruce Goodman. Imagine if you were defending Edgeworth, only for it to be Edgeworth who was the murderer. That would be an interesting twist, where you're like, oh god, my, my defense is actually the offense. They are the evil... That would actually be an interesting case where you have to intentionally lose. 
where essentially it's like how uh, Edgeworth helped us with uh, Vasque, uh, no, not Vasquez, but Vasquez in the Steel Samurai case, where he actually helped us. us objection! Um, Prosecutor Edgeworth, why did you object? I was hoping I would find something to say when I was objecting. Hmm, don't you think it's strange? I mean, why would the victim's ID card be lying on the ground where we found it? Well, Detective Goodman should have been at the police department yesterday. It was an evidence transferal for a case he handled two years ago. Evidence transferal. Mr. Edgeworth mentioned that too. But Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. Well, that's the thing. It's hard to say this, but... Word is that Chief Prosecutor Sky called him out there to the parking lot. Aha, but there's a thing. That phone did not work, so maybe that'll have to maybe come into it. And Lana's confessing is, uh, much. Hmm. Well, that seems to be everything. Let's examine the, the abomination. Uh, I was wondering about that. What? The Dancing Blue Badger? It's my masterpiece. <laughs> we get to watch it again. You made this gumshoe? The chief threw together some designs and I just did my thing, pal. Nice work. It's battery powered so it can go anywhere. There's no switch so it just dance dances until the battery dies. Funny you should say that. There is a case who defends someone who actually did the crime. Ooh, nice that they... I'm, well, uh, granted, it's not really an original idea. What if defense attorney f defends the guilty? It, I, it, it's bound to come up eventually, but nice to know they, uh, somewhere out there is the idea that I will run into someday, maybe. Poor Blue Badger, faded to dance until he drops. <laughs> it's added to the evidence. A work of art designed by the chief of detectives and created by Detective Gumshoe. And that's all I know about that. I'm not officially on the case, you know. Thank you. Why aren't you handling the case, Detective Gumshoe? We met the guy who is... What was his name? The guy in the parking lot. That'd be Officer Marshall. He was appointed directly by the Chief of Police. Officer Marshall. Is he some kind of Wild West Sheriff or something? <laughs> nope, Jake Marshall's just a regular officer. From West L.A. For a moment there, I wasn't sure. Look, pal, let me try to make things a little easier for you. Show them this and they'll let you examine the crime scene. Maybe. Received from Detective Gumshoe. Allows the bearer to investigate the crime scene. What is that written there? Is it- is that like... a signature? With twenty dollars? <laughs> Crossed out? I won't tell you which game it is, but keep your eyes open for it. I shall, I shall. I'll be surprised if this gets us anywhere. Just act like you're supposed to be there and nobody will look at you twice, pal. The detectives in there look pretty busy. Just imagine right now, behind those doors, a police drama in action. Somehow the thought fails to excite me. Looks like Patrolman is saluting the other guy. He must be a detective. And then I said, you do that, if you do that, your soup will get cold, buddy. Th that's hilarious, sir. I laughed so hard I cried. I guess he wasn't saluting. He was wiping tears from his eyes. They make a good pair. Wait, if he had this slip, why didn't he use it himself? Maybe because he didn't really have anything to add to it. And maybe he was hoping we'd come along. Who knows? Either way, he's a good guy. I always get excited when I come to the police department. Why is that? It just feels like I've jumped into a movie. Huh? You know, with all the police and criminals. Well, I don't know if this is all that exciting. Sure it is. Look at those two officers over there. They're probably talking about the latest bus. Funny, I thought they were talking about the weather. I thought they were talking about soup. The usual wanted posters are hanging up on the bulletin board here. Do you know this face? If you do, dial 911. You know, Mr. Wright, I've always thought it was kind of funny. I've never seen anyone who looked like the people in these posters. They hardly even look human. She has a point. Letter of introduction. Received from Detective Gumshoe. Allows Bird to investigate the crime scene. Ah, so it's probably not even a, a slip specifically for anything. It's just, hey, 
I have a slip of introduction. Let me in, please. From Detective Gamshu. Looks like the investigation is still going. I have to be getting back to the shop. Sorry, it looks like I'll be stuck in this pit till the sun sleeps. I'll see you in my dreams tonight then, baby. Oh, hey! Yeah. Oh, still here. Oh, uh, hello! Why the surprised looks? Didn't I mention? I've got a boyfriend in criminal affairs, too. What happened to the security guard? <laughs> hey, what's wrong, Bambina? You're looking like a dogie that's lost its herd. Jake Marshall. Strange guy to put in charge of a crime scene. First things first, we should probably just talk to him. The victim. There's something I wanted to ask you. The scene of the crime. A cold grave for men who've lost their lives. And me, I watch over them as they sleep. Dreaming of the desert's harsh judgment. He's asleep. Well, should we show this hopeless case something to catch his interest? Well, I guess we should just go ahead and ask him everything. There's something I want to ask you. Yep, just the same thing. Would have been nice if it marked both of them off, but oh well. Hey, would you mind reading this for me? What's this? I warn you, fan letters to me go straight into spittoon. It's a letter of introduction from Detective Gumshoe. May we investigate? Apparently this game takes place in 2017, and they still had boomboxes and flip phones. Such is the way of predicting the future. From 2001. Gumshoe? Ah, that old cow dog. Hmm. Be holding a birthday party or something. Huh? Look, where it should say letter of introduction, it says invitation. Ah, I think he just miswrote it. Wait, why am I getting all defensive here? No worries. This proves it's from Detective Gumshoe. Better than a blood test. Guess I'd better let you in, then. Th thank you, Officer Marshall. Ah, oh, that's right. He's a patrolman, not a detective. Which reminds me. Hey, wait a sec. Isn't a crime scene supposed to be handled by a detective of hire? Well, folks, the clues are calling. Welcome to our gold strike. Be like the settler. Strike out for lands unknown. Manifest destiny. Let's have a hootenanny. Note to self, police investigations are like settling land. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? I say I won't be needing this anymore. Ah, uh, we could have, should have kept it. Well, I guess before, yeah, before anything, let's present all our... Hmm, because again, I'm slightly paranoid because I don't know what will activate what. Like, if I present evidence to him, will I skip things? Or if I talk to him too much, will it move on? The victim. Officer Marshall, could you tell us more about the victim? Good men always die young. Remember that, partner? Uh, could you be a little more specific? Bruce Goodman. He was a detective, right? Well, well, aren't you a feisty doggy right there? Detective Goodman was stabbed here at 5.15. The smiling Madonna told me the tale. I think he means the witness, Miss Angel Star. One stab to the chest, a fine piece of work. This here's the autopsy report, but he was stabbed in the stomach. That's what Sky said. Lana said that she stabbed him in the stomach, didn't she? Or did somebody else say that? This here's the autopsy report. Death due to loss of blood. One knife wound. Died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. Died within an hour, you say? Something happened, please. Well, to be fair, this is the opening thing. We have to gather evidence and stuff. Get ideas. Granted, the kind of go back and forth of stuff. I guess that's more for settling up the atmosphere of like, ooh, what could it be that the upper echelon of the police department had this under... But at the same time, if uh, a letter of introduction is able to get us through, who knows? And why is a patrolman handling a detective job? Was my sister involved with the victim in any way? Funny you should mention that, Bambina. She prospected Sky and Detective Goodman had nothing in common at all. Nothing in common? They apparently worked together on a case a few years back. So there's no motive. Goodman wasn't a particularly gifted detective. 
That's one reason why he didn't do much work with the chief prospector. But my sister called the victim here on the day of the murder, right? Here to this parking lot. So it seems, like calling an unarmed man to a shootout at high noon. Marshal himself. As you talk to a Wild West man in the middle of Japan, well, Japanifornia, take some water down your gullet. Um, I don't mean any offense, but Officer Marshall, you're a patrolman, right? Not a detective. You calling me out? They shoot you for that in Texas. Eh, yeah, kind of. Huh? I was one of them fancy shoot detectives till two years ago, to tell you the truth. Oh, really? Now he tells me. But you're a patrolman now, so how can you be in charge of a crime scene? Nothing gets by you, does it, Bambina? So why are you in charge? No reason. We're just short on hands right now. I'm keeping an eye out in the meantime. That's odd, though. Detective Gumshoe was saying he had nothing to do. Nothing important, at least. He's nothing but a sad old cow dog that can't find his tail. Maybe it's because he runs with that Edgeworth, eh? Edgeworth? That cow dog's been kicked out of his cattle run by order of the chief of police. Just he don't realize it yet. Detective Gumshoe kicked out of the investigation? Well, first, let's... Hmm. Die within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. Died within, so he could have died earlier. Why is the time so off? At least with Hammond, he was thrown in the river. All right, compadre, count to three. Huh? You gotta do that if you're gonna draw evidence on someone. That's what we do in Texas. Remind me to never visit Texas. 5.12 p.m. The prospector's bright red steed came in at a trot, real slow-like. A trot? My Madonna tells me the crime occurred three minutes later, so it seems the chief prospector was lying in wait. Maybe waiting for a prince to ride in on his bright red horse? So what you mean is, the killer intended to use Edgeworth's car all along. Wrong thing. What about this here trophy? Ah, toy shield. Suits the boy well. What exactly could you shield with that? A toy knot, maybe? Officer Marshall, don't you have anything good to say about Mr. Edgeworth? You don't like him, right? But you get the point. You know, when I was a detective, I got one of these. Hmm, let me guess. Did it have a K for King of Detectives on it? Hey, they could use that same shield over and over. Note to self, the prosecutor's office in criminal affairs are surprisingly cheap. You know it. They've gotten cheaper with every passing year, I tell you. What's that? Some sort of police passport? This is Detective Goodman's ID card, strangely enough. He found it a good distance away from the crime scene. Good distance in this rat hole? If you want distance, get yourself to Texas. Texas? This is a tiny little crime scene in a tiny little town with tiny little evidence. What difference does a few yards make, compadre? All the difference, really. Note to self, if you encounter suspicious evidence, think of Texas. There's no better way to study than to hang out with the pros. Well, nothing else. Let's see if there's anything new. I assume that she called, like, the, the lunch lady called her... I guess, other boyfriend. Man, Japan is not <laughs> really breaking the stereotype of cowboys, are they? Nope. This looks like a cell phone. I thought it was a camera or like a tape recorder. Scientific analysis would suggest this belongs to the victim. I can't think of anyone else who it belonged to. What's so scientific about that? Should we check it out? Check it out. Right, let's check it out. It took control away from me again. Man, what a boring strap. What's wrong with that? Everyone has different tastes, you know. Here, check out mine. It's Pink Princess Strap. They're hard to come by, you know. I see series is as popular as ever with the kids. I see you are basically Maya 2.0 still. Imagine he checks the phone out and it's filled with nothing but dick pics. That would be funny. 
Hmm, this phone's still on the, uh, the re redial screen. Redial? Um, Mr. Wright? Most phones keep a record of all the calls you've made and received. You just press the blue button to display the last number you called. Convenient, isn't it? I'm surprised you didn't know about it. Sorry to disappoint you, but even I know about things like redial. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just you never know of people from your generation. Whatever. Let's check this phone out. Well, let's redial. Now, to see who the owner of this phone called last. Note to self, the defense attorney doesn't think first, he just pushes the button. Steel Samurai! Hey, that song! I know that! Hey, what's going on over here? Ah, oh, sorry. I see you, partner. You pressed redial on that there phone, didn't you? Uh, well, yeah. Whose phone is this, anyway? It was on the ground over here. Who is it? Whose is it? That belongs to Chief Prospector Sky. What? It's my sister's? She apparently dropped it when she was taken into custody right after the crime. Look, the last call was made right when the murder occurred. Looks like she was fixing to call someone. Except she only spoke for a few seconds according to this. Who did she call? No idea. Sorry, partner. Now I got a question for you, partner. I had a phone ring just now. One of those newfangled ringtones. Oh, that? Oh. I'm sorry, that was my phone. Wh what? Your phone? Yeah, it's kind of strange, but someone called me right as we picked up the other phone. Wrong number. I hope you're not lying. They shoot you for that in Texas, partner. Uh-oh, I've incited the wrath of the Lone Star Patrolman. Some phone, add it to the court record. Last call made three minutes after the murder. It appears to be the car where the body was found, and it looks like the lock on the trunk is busted. The crime took place in the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. Quite a luxury car. It just screams, I have money to burn. Yeah, prosecutors get the big bucks. B block is through there. That's where the visitors park. I can see the Lunchland car over there, far in the distance. Hey, you're right. I like the cute design on the door. I can see a cartoon cow munching down on a juicy-looking steak. Doesn't that strike you as a little creepy? You should have an echo effect when Phoenix is thinking. Maybe, but that would also take, like, effort. And another, <laughs> and another control key down here. Maybe. And <laughs> the more, like, pieces of the chain you add, the more likely things will go wrong. You just don't think too deeply about it and you'll be fine. Why would she have a cow eating cow? Why is she evil? Well, let's talk about Lana Sky. So there's no connection between Detective Goodman and my sister? That's correct, but there's a gold mine of evidence against her. And Prospect of Tomorrow is none other than Edgeworth himself. I'm afraid your sister's fate is decided, Bambina. Many condolences. Officer Marshall! Yeah, Bambina? How can you say that? You and my sister, you were... Is there something between this cop and her sister that I don't know about? I apologize, Bambina. Something must have gotten to me. Maybe it's that dry wind that's blowing through the prospector's office. Dry wind or ill will, someone's up to something here, but who? Office atmosphere. Suspicions about Edgeworth have been flying around for nearly two years now. Forged evidence? <laughs> Imagine Phoenix doing that. Forged evidence. Forged evidence and raging testimonies, you mean. He was unbeatable because he did whatever it took to win. Unbeatable, that is, until he met you. But rumors are just rumors, aren't they? Those are prosecutors we're talking about. Evidence is everything to them. I literally had to deal with Von Karma two months ago. You will never escape me, right? I will haunt your very dreams. If you follow the rumors about Edgeworth to their source, you'll find one person. But 
They're off limits. Untouchable, you might say. One person? Who? Hate to say this, but it's your sister, Bambina. Chief Prospect Atlanta Sky. What? My sister? Medgeworth couldn't rustle all those cattle by himself. Some people load their guns with bullets. Some people load them with deals. What, you're saying Edgeworth was making deals to win trials? Where's the gunshots? Where there's gunshots, there's bound to be bullets. Oh, how funny, because when there was a bullet hole, they were trying to argue that, oh, there's no second bullet, it never happened, it doesn't exist. Blech. Imagine if Karma's ghost did haunt Phoenix, and only Phoenix can talk to him. That would actually be kind of funny. Where it's just like, oh god, I'm going insane. Phoenix, you fool. I'm bound to you. And if you are to be bound to me, I'm going to make sure that you are very precise and perfect. I got possessed and haunted by my evil friend's ghost. And that's what the old timers say. There's a big old secret hidden around here somewhere. Everyone knows it. Is that why Detective Gumshoe was taken off the case? Did they target him because he was the closest to Edgeworth? I doubt that Edgeworth would want to talk, but let's see. And by ghost, I do mean ghost. Karma did hang himself in prison. I have not heard that yet, but eh, he, he's a crazy enough man. Who knows? In this world, who knows? And she's still gone. I wonder why... I wonder why it's like, no, you can't go from detention to the police department. Idiot. Phone! I, keep my mouth shut on that one. I know better than to go blabbing about things I don't know about. No, I wouldn't want you to do, do that either. Good. Oh, maybe you look... Autopsy! Nope. He doesn't care. Well, I guess let's watch him dance, maybe. Oh, I was wondering about that. What? The Dancing Blue Badger? It's my masterpiece. We have to watch him dance every single time. Well, we already know this. I wonder why it didn't, like, click click before. Mr. Wright, do you know why patrol cars are painted black and white? No idea. Why? Well, I think they're designed after a panda. A panda. Not that I have scientific proof, it's just a theory. Uh, do you mind asking how you came up with that theory? It was when I was on a school trip. I saw a patrol car and it came to me. We had just been at the zoo, see? What about zebras? Or did they just have n not have those at your zoo? Burp, burp, burp. Maybe go back to the office? Maybe present stuff to you! Ah, nice, we can reinvestigate if we want. Can we look at, like, the battery? No, we can't. Well, let's redial here. There's no need to push this again. Why not? What's wrong? You look like I do during finals. Never mind, it's nothing. Why give me the option if you don't want me to? How dare. The reason why most cars were painted black back then was because that was the paint that dried the fastest. Huh. We'll just go through and see if you have anything to say about anything. Here, see this bloody knife? See this death and decay? So maybe there has to be something left here that we are missing. What about this rope? Oh, that's not rope, that's death tape. This rope, is it? Yep, they laid it in the outline of the victim's body. So wait, the victim must have died when the killer closed the trunk on him. You have got to be the only person I know that would come to that conclusion. A. A block. This area is reserved for prosecutors. 
Defense attorneys are relegated to B Block. I dream of the day when I will be able to park my car here. I'll go over to B Block to buy my hamburgers from you, Mr. Wright. I'm not planning on giving up my job that soon. Harsh. She's already gunning for your life. What? Apparently I didn't go up there. Look, a stylish glass-walled room. Very nice. You can see the whole parking lot from in there. It says security. Perhaps it's a cafe? Huh? Cafe security. Yeah, that must be it. Let's check it out later. Um, I hate to break it to you, but I think that's probably just a security guard office. You know, I scored a 97 on my science test the other day. Too bad they don't have a test for common sense. Ha! Ah. But if there's a security diddly D up there, why hasn't anyone, like, in... Why was nobody in security doing security things? A work desk. Quite tidy, but a nice desk, easy on the eyes, polished a little soon. I prefer not to have it to look at myself while I work. What's this? It looks like a shield sometimes kind of broken. Maybe it's eh, a piece of gold plate. <laughs> she buy it for $70 tops. This girl has a thing about pricing everything, doesn't she? I wonder what that big K means. Mysterious. Well, we already know because we already went through this. It's kind of interesting that the game is letting me go through it again. Macy Bouquet. No kidding. Hey, there's a card on it. Back from the dead. Windy. I still don't know why Windy Old Bag has to do with that. Between a rock and a hard place. Wait, so a trophy is worth more than a badge? Maybe. Hmm. Only thing I can think of is... Maybe show him the phone? My sister's cell phone. The last time it was used was 515. 515, 518. Right after Goodman was killed. Maybe she was canceling her date for the night. Why did Lana make that call? Who did she make it to? Ah, name of deceased Bruce Goodman, 36. Date and time of death, 21, February 21st, between 4 and 5.30. That's a long range. Cause of death, loss of blood from a chest wound. I could have sworn somebody said he was stabbed in the stomach and died. Assessment, wound was caused by a 4.5 inch knife, single stab was found. That, that is amusing. That is actually lets you see the full thing. I guess the game really is just hard on that, hey, examine everything. I kind of like it. This must be the victim's blood, right? Either that or Edgeworth cut himself peeling an apple. What's Edgeworth doing with a knife like this anyway? Hey, maybe he spends his weekends roughing it in the wild. Edgeworth? In the wild? I think my fruit peeling theory is more likely. Are you kidding? I always pictured him as an outdoorsman. Now there's a scary thought. You're like the only thing I haven't actively checked. Hey, check it out! There's a metal plate here! Hmm. It looks like the names of all the previous recipients are engraved on it. Wow. One guy's listed a bunch of times. Von Karma. I guess he must be a foreigner. Eh. <laughs> An elegant outdoorsman. Eh, you never know. It's the, fur it's the furthest place he could be from an elevator. Uh, yeah. That's probably it. Well, whatever he's from, he must have been an amazing prosecutor. I'd like to meet this Von Karma someday. When she says it, his name does have kind of a ring to it. I do like that... I do like that that's actually incorporated a bit. I like how even when it's like super hard to read. You can at, re at least read something. Name and ID number are written here. Sergeant Bruce, we already know that. I wonder why they only use numbers for IDs. What else would they use? Letters, silly. There's a reason we have a written language in the first place. True. 
Sergeant Bruce Goodman, ID Yabba Dab. Yabba Dabba Doo! <laughs> Wouldn't that be better? Yabba Dab? Well, it does have a certain ring to it. Exactly my point. <laughs> Doesn't take much to amuse her. You are far more, like, energetic than Maya. <laughs> can I check out my badge? I can! <laughs> That's funny. So this is what the back of the badge looks like. And I always thought it had a safety pin. Each badge has a number carved into it. That way you can tell which attorney it belongs to. You mean you couldn't lend your badge to anyone? No, I'd be found out right away. Well, that's no fun. And you're telling me the judge was fooled by a badge that didn't even have a number. I like it. I like it. It's an HD. Is there, like, nothing else with this phone? Is there nothing else? Pure and true. <laughs> guide time. Eh, but it'll take a bit before I go guide. I either get, like, really frustrated, and then I go guide. Or if I really can't find it. Because... All of these are checked. I think I've prevented, pre prevented, presented everything to you. Have no doubt. <laughs> Is there any reason to examine their difficult <laughs> looking legal books? <laughs> Stand in a formidable row. They mock me. I tried reading one and it made my head hurt. When I closed it, it slipped out of my hand. Then my foot hurt too. Ah, <laughs> Phoenix. There's a poster of the Steel Samurai on the wall. Maya stuck it up there on the day she left. I didn't have the heart to take it down. I do sometimes get strange looks from clients, though. Guess what the plant's name is? The plant has a name? Proviscus. Mia's plant, Charlie. I've been taking care of him in Maya's absence. I don't know if that name means anything. Mia's desk. I sit here even less now that I've stopped taking cases. I ought to at least dust it once in a while. Why have you stopped taking cases? That still doesn't make much sense to me. Why would you stop taking cases, my dude, my friend? Is there a reason? Is it depression? Like, oh, I can't do a case without Maya. Hmm. And she's not here. Hmm. Maybe he was so sad to see Maya leave, maybe. So I have to be missing something. Question is. Oh, what, 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 what? 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 You get the mission, huh? man? A bit, a bit. I don't get that. Okay, so apparently there was a piece of paper on the trunk that I didn't see before. Okay. What's this? Looks like a note of some sort. 6 7S? Twelve two. Look, something's written on it. You're right. Let's see. Six dash seven S twelve two. There's a name printed on the paper above that. Goodman. Maybe it fell out of his pocket when he was killed. Well, what, wouldn't there be blood then? Well, so what does it mean, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Note to self for deductive reasoning. Go to Edgeworth, not Wright. I'm sure Edgeworth wouldn't know what this means either. Goodman's note. Can we analyze the note? 
So, how, well, how are we doing, Mr. Wright? I guess we've got some clues. We have an autopsy report, a note from the victim, and a cell phone. So you think we'll be okay? Well, the only thing still bothering me is that Lana's confessing to the crime. She says she did it. No problem! I can guarantee that she's not the criminal. Oh, by the way, Emma? Yes? I know that song your phone plays when it rings. What? It's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? That popular TV show. For kids? The phone that rang earlier wasn't mine. It was yours. At 5.18, just after the murder took place, your sister called you, didn't she, Emma? I, I'm sorry. Tell me what you talked about. I... She hung up right away. I see. Some phone updated. Ah, call to Emma, hmm? I probably should have guessed that, but for some reason my brain thought that Lana was just a fan of Steel Samurai because he keeps popping up everywhere! A detective is murdered. A, the suspect is a top prosecutor in the district. I've got a bad feeling about this. Like, maybe I still don't know everything that went on here. So yeah, I'm gonna have to look back the footage and see. <laughs> May imagine the call was red white. Hello, Phoenix, it's me. <laughs> you ruined my life, and now I've come to haunt you from my jail cell. Well, let's do the trial. February twenty third, nine thirty four, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number Two. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Re Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are still a lot of gray areas. Rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Except I don't believe that w in the truth that you're t s saying. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Skye, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. But there's one decisive difference between you and her. And that is... You're not a defense attorney. And how did you cut your hand, though? Because that's obviously going to be part of this. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. Onwards we go! First trial without a Fay helping me. No one's gonna bail me out this time. Oh wait, I can contact uh, Mia myself. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. February 23rd, 10 a.m. District Court, number nine. Nice to have at least the same judge. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. No, without Maya, you can't contact Mia. Ah, but Mia kind of contacted us last time when Maya was having trouble connecting to Mia. Granted, it was like snippets of words, but hey, it got us through. The defense is ready, Your Honor. And the prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. <laughs> has been ready for a while. <laughs> It's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since his trial. I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. I was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Star, to the stand. The cough-up queen. All right. Let's get down to business and remember the rules. Do not think on the 
the contradictions that immediately are apparent, think of the contradictions that are important to the witness at hand. Hmm, I haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Oh, oh, caviar! I've never eaten caviar before! The judge is really wolfing it down. Uh, and for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, uh, and you, sir? Did you order the fingerprint lunch box? Is it too early for lunch? Uh, it is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty it hurts. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. Why would you think that fish eggs would taste like that? What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Name profession now. Me, the name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. Hurry it up. Mm, very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Uh, huh? What exactly does that mean? I don't know why fish eggs would taste be tasting in the first place. I mean, we eat chicken eggs, so who knows? Until two years ago, Miss Angel Star was a special investigator with the police. Why is everybody, like, a former police something in this? Marshall used to be a detective. Goodman used to be alive. She was a first-rate homicide detective. W what? Miss Star was a detective? Ah ha! I, I know who you are! <laughs> Cough up! Cough up Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. V very well. You may continue with the description, Miss Star. Just who is this lady? If I might have the court's attention over here. Imagine Pearl being a detective. A, little a literal child's a detective. Would be an amusing thing. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor's spaces, yes? The crime took place by a car in the back of A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, Your Honor. Parking lot floor plans added. Mm -hmm. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm. It seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright? Uh, I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Wait, are they talking about me? Feels like things have been a bit mean. Somehow I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective intuition. That is a murder face. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. And then she thrust the pointy tip in, of the knife into, de into Detective Goodman's chest. Hmm, bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend. How touching. Hmm, as you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than... The point of the knife, which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be utterly crushed? I... I'm still thinking about that. It's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Hmm. Do I even have anything here that would... Of course, we save. Oh, 
Well, let's press and ask what you mean. How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence of crime, yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. <laughs> the lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim, killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Starr, you have something personal against prosecutors. I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired. To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. How can you say it's unbiased when you're literally saying that you hate prosecutors? Tis but a scratch! A scratch! Your arm's off! Indeed. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. Which one? This boyfriend, he's the detective? Not that boyfriend, the security guard. Th that boyfriend? You have several? Yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? The yet another boyfriend position is still open to applicants. I'll stick with the lunches, thanks. Note to self, the judge had to think before replying. The security guard room is in the lot in A block. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. And how come they haven't said anything? That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in the B block. So, she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. When I sense something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. Let's ask about that. You sensed something, so you're saying you had a premonition of the murder. It felt like, how would you say? Oh yes, it was like the feeling you get when you view a pumpkin chock full of seeds. I have no idea what that means. Speaking of a detective's intuition, wasn't the victim Mr. Bruce Goodman also a detective? Yes, well, he was like a young cheese. A young cheese? A pale white cheese, not yet tangy with experience on the streets. A greenhorn. Hmm. Then I must be hard yellowed and sharp as a tack. Yeah, with, <laughs> with the odor of an old cheese to match. In any case, there in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief of prosecutor standing next to a garish car. By garish car, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. M Mr. Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's, wasn't it? Indeed it was. <laughs> we get it! You deliver lunchboxes! Indeed. Hmm, what an odd case this is. And the person you saw, you are sure it was the defendant. I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. Witness, in your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. I'll fry you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. That... That was inspiring. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cry plagiarism. I may be relegated to the lily post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. A photograph? You took this! The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap, I took a picture. In fact, one of my lunch boxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? You think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. Well, that's gotta be important. Uh-oh, that is unmistakably Lana Sky. Hmm. But she seems to be wearing the detective's coat, doesn't she? Because that's not her usual coat. 
hmm, something's off about this. First off, the drum isn't knocked over. They are in A block. She's wearing the de uh, the deceased's coat, seemingly. How would the blood get up there? Hmm. So what was the defendant doing at the time? The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. The same hand that's damaged now. Hmm. But we can't see a body here. But at the same time, blah, blah, blah. Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. Uh, <clears throat> yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. You, you can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg? I mean, a person? Hmm, perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor? So the defendant was holding a knife. What then? Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife in Detective Goodman's chest. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop the crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm, the defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late? Yes, the next moment the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I... I see. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. I said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Mrs. Starr's testimony is flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. What do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. Don't smile like that! Hmm. So we got a photo. And she used to work there. I already pressed on everything, so I'm wondering... Would the autopsy report be pertinent here? Hmm. A single stab wound, blood loss. Try the right hand statement with the photo? But I don't... Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Let's take a look at the photo. Holding a knife in her right hand. That is very specific. But here it doesn't show that she's injured. Hmm. But the photo has to be important to something. Standing next to a garage car. Just holding... A that... Ooh, 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 maybe... Actually, because they're... Oh, dang it. I didn't mean to press that. Oh, well. We already saw this. Blah, blah, blah. I accidentally hit press, but better than accidentally pressing present when I don't want to. Holding the knife in the right hand, but there is no knife in this photo. Objection! And you witnessed this. You saw Miss Sky stab the victim with the knife. As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Hmm, I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. Look at this photograph! You took the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? Hmm, <coughs> Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. That had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. Yet it was still stronger than your ever feeble mind, Mr. E Mr. Wright. <laughs> what do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. And how can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? 
Do the dark crimson stains on the chief prosecutor's coat? I still don't think it's hers. But it's a black and white photograph. But it's still very clearly blood. Oh yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem except you. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit there and take this kind of abuse? I uh, got a better idea? Hmm. I guess it doesn't hurt. Because my idea is... Cur actually, actually, that is very important. It is, it, it is very important because her right hand isn't hurt. Right now, in uh, her hand is bandaged. So, when did that injury happen? I will object. Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. It does. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. Th that's it? If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo-sized lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. Premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in the photograph. Well, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh, if it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. Ah! We are. Well, we're making progress, but things are not looking good for us. These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder, a serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. The murder was planned. The rubber gloves proved it. Hmm, so it cut away. Well, let's press. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves? Like driving gloves, but they... We already said that they are surgical. The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of the kind used for autopsies. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. It's the only possible conclusion one can make. Would be nice if I had those as evidence. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Ah! Impressive! I'm sorry they took you off the force, mister. This is bad. She's got him thinking it was all planned. She can prove this claim the trial's already over. I've got to think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. It's only a flesh room, Mr. Wright. You can say that again. Hmm. We already went through these and none of these changed. Finally home detective intuition to our friends. I saw Tuesday in the car. The murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. Hmm. But wouldn't there then be blood on the gloves and not just the coat? Hmm. That's my thoughts. But let's go over everything else. Goodman's ID. I don't think it is important right now. The King of Prosecutors is not important. The knife. Yeah, traces of victim's blood. Record of parking. Internet 512. Died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. That's the weird thing. Cause of death. Loss of blood. Chest wound. Single stab. Same time death between 4 and 5.30. So technically not contradictory. I don't think that this is important yet. 6.7 S12.2. So it has to be the photo, I presume. Because we'll say there's no blood on the gloves, right? Nope. Your Honor, this statement contradicts. 
but I think it works because there's no blood on the gloves. The murder was planned. Wait, maybe? Or would it be the parking stuff? Because the murder weapon... Actually, yeah, I think that might actually be it. I think the parking stub might be the thing. Because how could she premeditate this? Oh, come on, that's perfect. Because my thought process was that how would she have premeditated murdering him if the murder weapon only arrived three minutes before? That's my thought. Because if Edgeworth's car got there three minutes before the murder, that means that somebody had to have broken into the trunk and... But if, hmm. but if it was to the blood loss, what about Goodman's note? It's Goodman's note, maybe the autopsy report? No. That's the only thing related to murder here. Maybe Goodman's note? I'm trying to think. There's nothing here that stands out to me. I personally think that the diddly D was the most important because it literally says that it can't have been that much. Ooh, actually, idea. What if we use the phone? I wonder if Phoenix takes this job to bang tables. I shall slap all the tables. Hmm. The murder was planned, and this proves it. Because maybe the phone call, because the call was made three minutes after. I'm just trying everything, but I can't, because, like, that's the only thing I can think. There are plenty of things that can be taken that way. So it's not the photo, it's not the paste, the uh, parking stub, it's not Goodman's note, it's not the cell phone. Is it the autopsy? I don't think so. What else do we have here? Something I knew, it was on my way to the lunch, when I sent something, perhaps it was my finally own detective's intuition. I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to the car. The murder was planned, the rubber gloves prove it. Then again, this could also be one of those you have to go through multiple times and they'll go, oh no, there's nothing we can do. Of which that case, it just feels like a bit of annoyingness. Maybe the weapon itself? Maybe... That... But that... Okay, I'll, I'll be... I, I understand that as well, but I thought that was what the pay stub would also work with. Because that was my... Thing. That was my idea of, like... Why would the knife... Work, but the pay stub not? Because I figured that would cover both to a degree. The location and murder weapon only got there like a few minutes Objection! so I thought they were tied together in a way I figured that the game would be a little bit nice and kind of into it that because my thought process was car pay stub proves that murder could not be that premeditated because it didn't get there in time like they could not have planned for the murder location and weapon to get there just three minutes before the murder and the time was on the pay stub and that's my thought process. And then that would lead to the murder weapon. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell lunch boxes for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What's wrong with this case? The bloody murder weapon. A red car, all belonging to the prosecutor there? The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? 
Mommy, are prosecutors bad people? The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned the murder. And that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not have also prepared the most important thing? The murder weapon. Oh. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Ah! ah! Order! 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 Great, now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. Nope, not really. Are you gonna say that she called you? Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. What? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. But, but this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah. But prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. Why is there a trial in court? Uh, because the world is a must messed up place. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need prove. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, why would... Oh, I skipped ahead. I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you. My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now? Angel's deduction. Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. How did you know that, though? I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge a knife in the... In... Oh, I know where I'm gonna put the thingy! I know! It was a single thing! Not multiple! It was single! Single! The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound like a lot, a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So if I order a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may not cross-examine the witness. I know exactly the thing that needs, uh, pointing out. She said again and again it was a single stab. Lannis guy intended to murder the detective Goodman. You've said that, but you haven't told us how you know. That's what I'm about to tell you, rookie. I believe what she just said was a mere prelude to the story she's about to tell. Try not to interrupt her again. Rookie. Never interrupt a storyteller. It's like pulling a bun out of the oven half-baked. Something's half-baked here, all right, and it's you. Try not to confuse the defense witness. They're not very quick on their feet. Now, why did you believe the suspect intentions to murder the victim? Not to mention, Marshall already said the victim and defendant didn't know each other. Her actions speak for themselves. Well, at the same time, that hasn't been uh, supplied yet here. The, the court does not supply yet. You have no proof that Miss Sky called him there. You have no proof that she didn't. Hmm. Miss Redgeworth, thoughts? There is no record of a call made on the defendant Miss Lana Sky's phone. She might have written him a letter. Come on, you could have tried a public phone first at least. In any case, the victim came to the prosecutor's office where he was murdered. I'm sure he had a reason to be there. Witness, why do you think it was the suspect who summoned him the victim that day? I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. But they have nothing in common, don't they? What kind of grudge? Well, I wouldn't know that. Of course you don't. That's because she didn't have a grudge. Rookie. I have a lunchbox here. Now, what's inside? How am I supposed to know? See, we agree there's a lunchbox there, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is a lunchbox with pretzels, don't you agree? I get it, that's why my lunch was so salty. This judge isn't very good with metaphors. The suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodman. Will you tell us your basis for thinking this? It's simple. Nothing else could drive. Well. It was a single stab. You say she stabbed him again and again. 
But you couldn't have witnessed that! Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moss surprise. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, mister. What did you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states the death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha! You're right! Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. What a hunk! He's my hero, really! What about my objection? No one noticed? Well, witness! You got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. A splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that, that you thought was blood. Testify! Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's what gas lead the whole... Red muffler. But she's not wearing a muffler. Miss Starr, I demand an explanation! Objection. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proved it yourself. With your own photograph. Huh? But, but that, that can't be! Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations, perhaps you've finally found your true calling in life. Hmm, harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection, chopped liver? But it was there, a scarf, no, not that, but something red, really. Well now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? Very well, witness, continue your testimony. One thing that the anime does is animate the testimony, so you can see Maya murder someone. Okay, that's cool. It's kind of like, here's how we, they say it happened. That makes it much more in interesting. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. But how could you do that, Chain Link Fence? And when they touch evidence, they use gloves. Ha! <laughs> That's smart. Ah yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what I had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made it to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but with her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Uh, an oil drum? But, uh, she ran in... She ran behind the partition, and that's where the... That's not where the glo the diddly dee was. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rawr. Very well, Mr. Wright. You cross-examine if you will. How could she knock over a drum if she was behind the partition? Let's press. So, where is this partition on the floor plans? I'm sure she means the wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. I think I might have to use the floor plans. You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm, maybe I should press her for more details. Press. I'd like to see this on the floor plans, just to be safe. The lunch lady, the land, lunch land car was. She was a visitor, but she was parked in B block. So you witnessed the murder from here. 
That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yeah. That's not her, that was the judge. That would make it about 30 feet, yes. Is that correct, Miss Star? Yes, that's right. But there's a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing, the cough up queen, lunch lady athlete indeed. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence, so she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high too. So how did Miss Sky not get away? Well, let's get the muffler idea. She mentioned the muffler. Well, what, wasn't it be about the car? What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard was say was the word muffler. Just that one word. So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else. Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean... Ask further. By phone, do you mean... This cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately. My memory. It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No, the court doesn't see, Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone. The phone call only lasted a few seconds. That's true. Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm. Good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. Lana's cell phone updated in the cell record. In the record, the word muffler was overheard during a call, but it was on so maybe I need to... I saw it all, how she tried to phone on the wall, but had to use her cell instead. You saw it all, but it was behind a wall. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha! I was going to ask the same thing! I'll only say this one time, so listen close, rookies. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. Then she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled out her own cell phone out of her pocket. Bull! Oh, but that's not where the cell phone was found! And during that time, you climbed over the chain link fence. Then when I boldly grabbed her arm, the chief prosecutor hung up on her phone. And you saw her doing this. What is it, Mr. Wright? Well, I guess floor plans. Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Maslana Sky. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Miss with me, and I'll make you cough it up. All of it. Hmm. <clears throat> Let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you couldn't have possibly seen Miss Sky making that phone call. I believe you see what I'm getting at. The emergency phone was on the backside of this partition. If indeed you were in B-Block, you couldn't have seen it! Ah! Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch. She's coughing up lies. Gah. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question. Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counter-attack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. Hmm. The witness lied about... Hmm. What would she be lying about? Because how could... Because maybe she could have gotten over where she saw it. Because maybe she wasn't in B block. She was in A block. Miss Sky tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. 
What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Mr. Starr to lie about it. Pointless to lie, I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean Miss Starr witnessed the crime from a different location. Karma. Jesus, even I wasn't this obvious. <laughs> exactly. He was a little uppity at certain points, like when the three minutes were up and he didn't get his conviction. But... <laughs> in the end, he was kind of a chill dude, if insane. A different location. Now that's a pointless lie if I ever, ever heard one. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. <laughs> let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points to one direction. The place... Was she in the security room? This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Indeed, the security room is the in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm, she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. She said so herself. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness not being part of the pros prosecutor's office couldn't park in uh, A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime in the back of the partition is here. I remember in your testimony, you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Starr? How many years have I been getting the better of men to think that the tables be turned? Today, a man has got the better of Angel Starr. But why did you lie? That's my question. Why did you lie? Order! Order, witness! What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. So you're basically just like a prosecutor that you so hate. The guilty. Is she talking about Miss Skye? Oh, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells... Wait, how did... How did she get it there? Because it's the trick... <laughs> the truth still stands, but it doesn't. It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? Me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's reveal what we know. Because I now get it. When they showed the picture, the picture was taken from A block, or from B block. So blah, blah, blah. Miss Starr witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B Block. It must make a vital difference, but what would it change? Angle of view of the crime. Why, the angle at which she saw the crime occur would change. The angle? What do you mean? Uh, well, the security guard station is on the second floor, and, um, she would have a sort of more 3D view of the crime. And this is important. Why? Um... Hey, I was right. Perhaps you'd like to reconsider. But it's perfect. The photograph. They literally showed me the the diddly D. Distance of the crime. It changed the distance between her and the scene of the crime. Why my condolences, Mr. Wright? But oh, yep. I'm just trying them all because I'm I'm still hooked on the one thing. Objection! What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Skye? Well, witness? You. Yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? The quality of my lunches has gone from low to inedible. I was bringing a PB&J with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass-walled station. And before I knew it, that it was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. 
but the door was locked and I couldn't open it. So is this going to explain the... <laughs> now I remember why we fired you. You suck at your job. <laughs> I could see that. That's why I had to go through the visitor's parking in B-Block. That's quite a detour. But you can't get there. Unless you jump the fence. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. Five minutes? And that's going to contradict. Hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there, the defendant's chair, who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. Because now we have two contradictions. The phone call that she says she interrupted was at 518. So maybe that could be it, but also the angle of the photograph. You have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Maybe he has to stop this? I have two ideas. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You could make pasta in that amount of time. If you like it, I'll dent, eh? I've got lunchboxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. A five-minute blank? Isn't that strange? Strange. If you are a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey, don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run. But this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. You... Yeah. She just keeps... Going whack. Well, then it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth is the next witness ready to go. Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright! That was too close. I'm afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Hold it? Who said? Why? Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's what she tried to foist off on me! I prefer to not take defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have a decisive evidence. What was that? Is this another one of her trick lunch boxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Uh... Is your jumbo lunch? Is this your jumbo lunch box? Woohoo! A triple decker! Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. God damn it. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the Lunchland motto says, you won't be disappointed. What's she going to pull out of her lunch box this time? How many lunch boxes did she pack? 90 exactly. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now. The matter of the victim's shoe, did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim's, and the other's blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Skye. This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. And here comes the dumbest part of this case. It's a... Yeah, because she doesn't wear white shoes, does she? What? There was blood found on that shoe? Also, how can you know that it was tested if you aren't part of the police? And if it was, wouldn't it have been added as evidence? Try lunch, lad, for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. Yeah, this is... <laughs> Witness, that's... What's the meaning of this? Why is the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple, as I've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself, which means it should be non put inable. The photograph I'll give you, but this is blood test. And you had blood tests performed. Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence that shall shall be shown without the approval of the police department. You know, except for all those times that evidence has been introduced uh, against the will of the police department in the past cases, where I just bring up random stuff. Unless we got those uh, assigned in between. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It's 
seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was proved by the police department at a, as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. You can at least study evidence law, really. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure that the guilty are properly judged. Victim's shoe. White enamel shoe bears traces of blood from Goodman and Lana Sky, but where was her blood come from? Very well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. We went so far from her testimony. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. Yes, you should have. Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on the shoe. You can't say for sure the blood belonged to the defendant of the blood test. You claim to know something about blood tests, rookie? Huh? Well, speak up. Uh, well, blood comes in four types, A, B, O, and A, B. However, you can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood. That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, we can differentiate between millions types of different... Uh, different, millions of types of all blood tests out there, which means that we can more or less narrow any sample of blood down to just one person, or so I hear. But that's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA test results, but they said there's very little doubt it could be anyone but Miss Lana Skies. Hmm, so the suspect's blood was found on the victim's shoe. That ties her directly to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was gonna say that. Yeah, it's a victim's shoe. Hmm. That is why the case sucks. <laughs> hmm. Let's press. We can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the puppered fish guts, right? Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like your client. She's in hot, enough hot water to make a whole vat of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't you have a problem with this shoe? Problem? This is critical. I would say so. There's a problem because, personally, where did her blood come from? Because if there's... We have a picture showing her... Oh, wait. Oh! I forgot that we can do this. Ah, that's blood there, too! And the sole of the shoe, it's got to be the victim's. He must have stepped in a puddle of his own blood. All this blood, it's horrible. Mm. This blood might be an important clue. How would the blood get on the bottom, then? This blood, it's my sister's, right? It appears so. Lana's right hand was bandaged when I saw her in jail. She must have cut herself at the time of the crime. Poor sis. Blood on the bottom. Hmm. There's a problem. If I'm not imagining things, I'd say there's one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction! That gleam in your eyes, you're still young, rookie. I'd give you a peppered fish gut now, but you couldn't take the heat, could you? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is the contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with the evidence. It's the blood on the bottom. I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of this shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Hmm, indeed there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about this, the bottom of his shoe? What could possibly be contradictory about the blood on the bottom of his shoe? Photo. The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? 
Note the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why isn't there any bloody footprints around the scene of the crime? Ha ha! As you can see, there were no traces of any such footprints at the scene of the crime. Man, I wish we didn't have this show as evidence. Now everything is going to smell like feet. Yeah. Why couldn't Gumshoe have presented the shoe evidence? It would have been thematically appropriate. That contradicts your claim about this shoe. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Order, order, order! Well, witness! What? Uh, I, uh... We're going, Mr. Wright, but... It's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction, but then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint, because he... Well, it's... Maybe it was uh, dried... Oh, maybe it's because of uh, the opening. Maybe Mr. Goodman committed a murder, and that's where the blood on his shoe came from. Somebody else was murdered, he stepped in their blood, it dried, and then he was killed by Lana. So when it when he was in the uh, diddly D, the parking garage, the blood on his shoe was dry. Oh, that's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. I knew about that part too. She couldn't have kicked over the oil drum because they were at the wrong side of the partition. But granted, the phone was on the wrong side of the partition anyway. Oh, she's a beautiful but deadly. A predator of this one, a leopard woman, rar. I thought that was a strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that, hmm? I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, yeah, because the, uh, the drums are very heavy, so to knock one over would take on immense force. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. Witness, well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. Water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright. Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason. Aha! You don't mean... She was... Yes, the suspect knocked over the oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would become evidence against her. But then why would she com admit to murder? And also, it's still too heavy. That ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left on the victim's shoe ties her quite clearly to this murder. Then after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's specialty, erasing evidence. That reminds me, Miss Guy's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she'd cut herself when she stabbed him? But the gloves. Yes, that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe. Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. Mr. Wright, do something, please. What? What can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime and she tried to conceal it, but... Enough. There is no further need to debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Who holds it now? Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? Me? Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution side? Well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing bloody footprints. Well, I thought you'd have your fill, but here you are demanding a second helping. After lunchbox, a lunchbox called evidence. Wait, wait, just don't tell me you have something else. The time for deliberations is past. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare me the cough up queen. Look at this. Photograph? But how did you get that? I had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. 
Hmm, I see no room for ever in this evidence. Mr. Wright, wait. Look at the asphalt in this photo. Hey, it's clearly wet. Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I couldn't have helped after all. It's not your fault. I know I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. Is it gonna be Mia? Talking to me? Flickering to me? I'm sorry, Mia. Right, wet or not, don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well. The time I'd like to declare the verdict for good. Objection! <laughs> objection, objection, objection. Your Honor, wait! What is with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? Whatever it is, can it wait? No, it can't. It'll be too late. Look at this photograph. The last one submitted. Look at this photograph. This trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. Right, wet or not, you can still pleasure yourself. Ah, <laughs> oh, wacky world. So, right, are you saying there's a problem with this latest evidence? Yeah, think later. Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. Do we have it? Can we look at it? We cannot. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem in this photo. The tailpipe, maybe. But also, how did it come off? He was stabbed. If only we actually, like, knew Edgeworth's car, because let's see. <laughs> Wait, why isn't the shoe not clean of blood? Hmm, that would be another thing. Uh, I do see something in there, though. But when it comes to the case, maybe it could be that, because if the shoe was down here... Hmm. Just trying to make sure. Because it could be the shoe, or it could be the tailpipe. Hmm. I'm just sad that I can't save. Because then we'll have to go through a lot if we're wrong. Okay, so it has to be either the tailpipe, because muffler, she was saying muffler, so maybe... Either that, or the shoe. Because while it could be... Wait, but also, if there was, wouldn't there have been a lot of water mixed with blood at the crime scene? Because let's see. Wet or not, is what Mia said. There are three... So it's either the water, slash Sue, or the thing in the tailpipe. Maybe the water? Well, it's probably here, don't you agree? Nope. Okay, so it's not the water. Is it in the tailpipe? What's this? What's this? There's something poking out of my, the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, you just said muffler. However, I see no trace of the muffler or scarf in any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also a part of a car motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as a part of the exhaust system of pipe. I see and I see. What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hmm, so what if there's something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. What? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. 
Tell us why you think this piece of cloth from the mother is related to the case. Could it be Goodman's note? Cell phone. No, I don't think so. Well, Your Honor, how do you feel about that? Nope. I thought it would be. No, no, I mean, what do we think about the... I'm afraid the reason we had to kiss you, Mr. Wright. I don't think it would be cell phone. Oh, but she was trying to say. Yeah, you're right, because she was... They updated the phone thing, too. I forgot they updated that. Miss Star, recall your testimony for the court. Ma, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's why she had me confused in my earlier co testimony. Muffler. Ah, yeah. Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Very topsy-turvy, this, <laughs> this testimony. Well, it seems we'll have to suspend the proceedings. Suspend? I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered, there we do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. <sighs> That was close, but we made it, at least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30-minute recess. It's lunchtime, after all. He's still hungry. To be continued. What, are we going to open up with a second investigation? Oh, but that was a wacky trial portion. Because, let's see. What parts had me confused? At first, it was the... The gloves. After you suffer through a bunch of lunchboxes, remember to stay hydrated. But... Yeah, because that was just a lot. Topsy-turvy, back and forth, again and again and again. And the one part that really tripped me up was first was I wanted to say, well, the car was, wasn't was there, like premeditated, and it was like three minutes before the murder, so how could it really be premeditated? That's The, the premeditated part flew me th threw me for a loop. And I guess, yeah, the knife, because the knife was in the car, but then if you'd want to then qualify that by saying car was... A free agent in this case. So it couldn't have been premeditated in that way. And then... Do, 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 do. I still didn't get to talk about, like, uh, present to the court. Well, why would she still... Well, I guess that's partly what they went over, I guess. But I figured they would have given it more grandiosity of... Why would Miss Star run all the way around to the B block and Lana would still be standing there for her to take a picture and then climb over the diddly D and apprehend Lana? But then how could she properly apprehend Lana long enough to take that picture of the barrel? Because the barrel was very heavy. So it doesn't feel like it would be easy to knock over. But I'm, I still think that the, the shoe not being wet makes a little bit of sense, maybe. But at the same time, wouldn't the water still be there? If, because, again, it's just like, it, it's a very weird setup so far. I didn't mind, like, the investigative part. The 3D is kind of interesting, that you can investigate, like, each bibbidi-bop evidence individually. I find that pretty cool. But... That trial portion was a bit wacky and weird. A bit too topsy-turvy. So I'm saying it's kind of half and half. 
and it'll depend on the rest of how things go for me to properly give it a verdict. But we shall be stopping for now because we've been going for three hours because that testimony part took a while or as well as it kind of took me a bit to properly investigate and find that piece of paper that so far has not been used. And why is the Gremlin Badger Man in our inventory? We'll never know, will we? But I think that shall be it for now. Well, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels. The Edited Content YouTube channel, which I swear if content is coming to eventually. Neon Icy Wings on YouTube. And then I also have the gaming channel, Neon Icy Games on YouTube, where I stream on YouTube as well as post all of these streams after the fact for posterity and such. But if you prefer to watch me on Twitch, I also dual stream to Twitch slash well, twitch.tv slash neon icy wings Blech. and then i also have other social medias like twitter deviantart newgrounds and tumblr all of which can be found through my link tree which is like link tr dot slash oh, no link tr dot ee slash neon icy wings it's weird you should be able to find the direct link in most linky places and bios there are far too many social medias in the world. As for catching me when I stream, uh, I don't really have a schedule right now. Because, meh, it hasn't really helped me in the past, and brain gets angry sometimes. Mm. So yeah, follow on Twitter if you want to stay up to date on when I go live, but even then, Twitter is also kind of weird. Meh. I'll try to, like, in a day's advance, put it on the twi Twitter... No, not Twitter. The Twitch channel schedule feature. I try to do that. But, yes. Thank you very much for watching. If you... I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye. Bye.